Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time, <clears throat> so please excuse me if I get any kind of issues while filming. Um, I am making a card for my father. His birthday is May 1st, and so by the time this video goes up, this his birthday will have come and gone. Um, I'm going to be doing some real-time coloring with a little bit of a voiceover. Possibly, I haven't fully decided yet, but I wanted to come on here and to share with you what I'm doing. So I'm using these two stamp sets here. This is um, Wizards, and this is Grand Wizard, and these are both uh, sweet stamp shop stamp sets. I love them. I saw them. I knew that I had to get them because they'd be great for in my kids' scrapbook since we went to Wizarding World um, in October. We're all Harry Potter fans, including my dad, and I thought that this would make a great birthday card for him. So I'm going to be using this, these two stamp sets, and I'm also going to be using Copic markers to color them. I have all of the, I have a color chart off to the side here. I have all the colors that I plan to use. I did have to do a test run for some of these images just to see what colors I liked. So. I am going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, this is going to be a real-time coloring, so hopefully it won't be too long of a video. And, um, yeah, so let's get started. Oh, I also, I stamped everything on Copic-friendly paper with um, Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink. Okay, everyone, we're going to start. start out by coloring all of the images here. I have them stamped out on some Copic-friendly paper with... Uh, Lawn Fawn's Jet Black Ink. There's going to be a lot of Copic colors here, so I'm going to show you what I'm using, and I'll have the colors like I have here up, uh, across the top of the screen. So we're going to be coloring Fox here, the Phoenix, Dumbledore's Phoenix. And I'm just starting with my darkest color and going light. There's not a whole lot of shading going on. I did want to color him you know, like a Phoenix would look or the one at least in the movie or is on fire. So I start with the darkest color which of course is the red shade and that's R37 and then I just go in gradually. I do go over um, each line to kind of smooth them out as the colors um, blend together. Um, I was trying to pull the red so that it would it would go a little farther in without covering the entire image. I did do everything on uh, test samples just to see what colors I wanted and I realized that I needed to bring in the next color to the next I don't know, I guess you could call that his other wing. Not exactly sure. Well I guess that yeah I'm not sure what that would be. If that would be considered his his outer feathers or a glow around him or, or what. So I'm just going to color away. So this one is YR09. And see here, I'm just trying to blend the two colors. These colors actually blended very nicely. There's still a little bit of a line. I should have done a much better job of blending, but there isn't a harsh, harsh line. Uh, so I was very glad about that. At least it doesn't look harsh to me. So the next color I'll be using is YR68. And again, just blending the colors together and then pulling it through. I think he turned out really well. I really I adore these images. They, are, they were so much fun to color. I got my kids wearing some of them uh, for my dad's birthday card. Which, of course, at the time of making this, I was running short on time since I had gotten sick in the middle of this project. <laughs> which is always fun. Um... But still, quite happy with the way the card and the images all turned out. So, as you can see, the YR09 and the YR68, they go nicely together, but I still left a little bit of that line. But once you start coloring in with the rest, it didn't look so bad. And then here I have the Y17. And I color in the rest of the body. Now, I don't know how it looks to you, but right now it just looks like a muddy, muddy mess. I don't care for the way the Copics <laughs> look when they're wet, but I love the way they look when they're dry. Some of the colors don't look right when they're wet. So there was Y18, and now I'm going in with Y37. 
15. But again, to me, it looks like it's... Oh, sorry, no, that's still Y18. Um, it still all looks... This is Y15. It still all looks like the same shade. For his little feathers there at the top, I just thought it would be really cute to have it look, you know, like the, the rest of him. So we'll start with the R37, YR09, YR38, Y17, and then Y18, since it'll just be blending into the Y15 anyways. For his little beak and feet, I use YR07 and just give it one layer. And then I do go in um, and flick a little bit of the YR68 onto his belly. I just I did that in a practice. It didn't turn out the exact same here, um, but I still just really liked the way it looked. I thought it just gave a little bit of something to his tummy here. So I'll give you guys a little bit closer of a look. Right now he kind of looks a little bit like a hot mess, or at least he does to me. <laughs> he looks kind of all blended. Oh, well, there, I guess not so bad. So, and then my camera is going to go in and out of focus. And now we're going to go ahead and go on to Dumbledore. I did end up pausing um, in between each of the characters because I wasn't doing this all in one sitting. So, I was trying to just do a little here at a time. So, here's all the colors I'll be using for Dumbledore. And I did have them across the screen there. It's a lot of colors. You saw that basket at the beginning, it was huge. There's so many empty spaces in my, where my Copics are. <laughs> like for a second I forgot that I had them all sitting out where I take the pictures because couldn't find them. So um, I'm going to start off with this hair and I'm just using, uh, let me find my little cheat sheet here, C1 and C3. I was trying to do the lines in his hair um, with the C3 as well just to darken it up but in the practice I didn't like the way his beard turned out so I don't really um, do that much here with him and of course I kept forgetting areas of his hair so um, but let me know what you guys think about this real-time coloring I kinda like it doing a voiceover there's a lot of dead space like I feel like I need to talk Wow even if I'm coloring a big image because there's a lot of dead space but um, you know just let me know what you guys think if you if you like this way if you kind of want a little of both you know I'll be happy to do either one so I'm just gonna go ahead and blend that back out with C1 that was C3 that I used now I'm blending with C1 And I did use a lot of the same colors for each of the characters. Um, each of the characters are colored for um, uh, Gryffindor. There we go. I almost forgot what I was doing. So see here I'm trying to flick some of the dark color in. And I couldn't seem to get my marker to just do lightly. And just didn't quite turn out the way I was hoping. So... I did kind of give up, um, but I think he looks good either way. Either that or I need to let it dry a little bit more before I went in to flick, which is probably what I did with my test one. I did test all these colors out to see if I had colors that looked nice together and this, that, and whatever. I also have most of my markers set aside, so of course I'm trying to uh, figure out which colors I'm using. And I think I might have actually goofed and used a few colors that I shouldn't have in certain areas but now going back to do the voiceover I couldn't tell you what they were so for his hat and his robe I use uh, C4 and I believe C6 um, or excuse me for his hat I use C4 and C6 because I wanted that a little bit darker for his robe I use C2 and C4 I wanted it a dark but more on the a darker gray but more on the lighter side than his hat and I'm not sure why because both would have worked out but I think I wanted it to be a bit darker than his hair so it stood out against his hair but not quite as dark as his hat I guess I'm not exactly sure but it was so much fun coloring these
So I'll make sure that I do leave a link below to, um, if not the stamp set, because they do sell out of these stamps quite a bit, or quite quickly. Um, but I will make sure to leave a link to the Sweet Stamp Shop um, website. Just I love their stamps. I'm starting to create a collection of those too, and I have to stop myself because otherwise I'd, I'd own quite a few that I'd never use. I already have that problem with Lawn Fawn. They're just so cute. <laughs> so now that I'm all done coloring the outside of his robes, I'm going to move on to... I don't know what. What am I moving on to? His skin. Well, let's color his skin. Why not? <laughs> I don't even know where I am. It's, like I said, being sick in the middle of this kind of, you know, threw everything off. So I started out with E31 and E33 for his skin here. The darkest, of course, around the hair and under the hat. And then I'm just going to go ahead and kind of blend that out. I don't go over his glasses right away because I do want that to be a little lighter so I try not to go over that too much because it is behind his glasses. I use little hands there and I don't think I do any shading on his hands, do I? Nope, guess not. I do go in with, I want to say C4, give him some nice dark gray eyebrows. Always fun, right? And then for the rest of his robe, for the little stripes on the side and the rest of his hat, I use R59 and R39 for the red colors for um, Gryffindor's colors. And then I also use Y19 and Y15 for, I don't, for his tassel, but I don't know, would you consider... I wouldn't really consider that a dress, but it's not quite a shirt either, so I'm not sure what you would call that underneath his robe. Like, well, I guess it could be a type of dressing gown. I mean, if you think about it, in the movie, he's not really wearing a robe, he's just wearing a one, one outfit, so yeah, dressing gown, I guess. We'll go with that. So give me just a second, because I think my kiddo walked in. Okay, sorry about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and color his tassel and the rest of his dressing gown, robe, outfit, whatever. Um, more on the gold side of things. So I started with, most of this I started with a little bit of the light shade and then went over it with the dark to easily blend it. This time I just went in with the dark and then um, the light to blend it out. So there's a little Dumbledore. Very cute. Now we're going to move on to Harry and Hermione. Now most of the colors for, for both of them are the exact same. So for Harry's hair, I'm using E47 and E49, but for Hermione's hair, I'll be using E23 and E27. Harry has darker hair. I want to say it's a very dark brown, almost black. So that's what I was trying to go for. And then Hermione's, I know it's a little more on, well, maybe it's a little more on the redder side, but I was trying to go for kind of a lighter, lighter brown. So there I'm just pointed out because at the time making this I thought I would be telling you every color and not putting it on the screen but there was a lot of colors this way I don't that you can pause it and see all the colors that were used but I do show them there so uh, for their skin it's going to be E30, E31 uh, pants and shirts T1, T3 as well as oh excuse me for the I think it was for the shirts, it was T1 and T3. For the pants, it was T3 and T5. The shoes were going to be Y... Nope. W9. I have my little cheat sheet here. You think that I'd be able to figure it out, right? Um, their coats were going to be W8 and W9. 
their scarves Y19, Y15, and R39 and R37. So for Harry here, we're going to go ahead and get him colored up. And apparently I started with the skin. I thought I had started with the hair, but apparently not. And I don't know why my camera was going in and out of focus. I apologize, guys. It just did not want to seem to focus on Harry at all. So I do apologize for that. I didn't notice until I was working on Hermione. And I thought it was just because of my hand. And that may be part of what it was, but... No. So I didn't like the way I had done the test, so I thought I would just scribble in the brown. Because I know that he's got, like, the, the highlights and the... But he doesn't have, like... Yeah, I couldn't quite figure out how to do his hair, so I just... I scribbled in some of the darker color and then went over it with the light. And then I do go back in and kind of smooth out the darker areas. Um, not 100% happy with the way his hair turned out, but he still turned out pretty cute. So, I guess I should have just, I should have checked more to make sure that this was focused. I apologize, guys. It's actually making me a little bit dizzy <laughs> watching it go in and out of focus. It could also be because of all the white on there. And uh, just so you know, the little white piece of paper on the other side, I should have covered up the, co the ones I'd already colored, um, was really just so that I could protect the uncolored images. Um, I should have done it on both sides, so if my marker splooged, it wouldn't affect either colored or non-colored images. So now I'm going to go on to Hermione here, and I'm going to color in her hair as well. Okay, no, her skin <laughs> first, and then her hair. And, yeah, yeah, it's just uh, one of those things, right? Although there it doesn't look like I did a very good job of blending. Ugh. But maybe that's just because my camera is freaking out. Holy cow, camera, stop. 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 Nope, not going to stop. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and color her hair here, and we did. I did try to keep um, a lot of the darker color in the areas that it would be the darkest, um, but I did put quite a bit of the dark color in because I did want a lot of that showing. Or not the dark color, excuse me, the light color. I did put the. Yeah, I, it's been a, clearly a long time since I've colored and done a video and a voiceover and anything else. And I'm not even sure why my camera is spazzing out anymore. Again, guys, I am so, so sorry. Because it didn't do it for the other images and there was just as much white. I must have just had it zoomed in just too far. <sighs> sorry, guys. I did give her little curls off to the side, just a little bit of color there. And now I'm going in with the Hogwarts colors, or the, excuse me, the Gryffindor colors. And I'm going to be coloring the scarves. And I was off camera for Harry and forgot to move it down. And I apologize for that because I guess I didn't realize that until just now. But basically what I'm doing for Hermione, I'm doing exactly the same for Harry. Although I do alternate the colors. So as you can see, yeah, let's move that, zoom that out. Yay! Um, so their, their scarves don't line up exactly <clears throat> Excuse me, the same. I do alternate where the red starts, where the yellow starts. But I do go back and forth because they're small images. And I'm not too worried about the blending, but I did like the two-tone color of the red there, so that's why. Otherwise, you normally would not have to do two different color reds. And I almost forgot to do Harry. I do that a lot, actually. I get one image going and then forget to go to the go to do the other. So now we're going to pull out the yellow, goldish colors there. And as you can see, the other two colors, is now that they've dried some, you can really see how nice and smooth and blended they look. I really am very happy with the way this these images and the cards have turned out. And of course now my camera's not freaking out anymore, so you can see. <laughs> it's 
So we're just going to finish up their scarves and then we're going to move on to their clothes. Now this is one of the areas that I did uh, goof on the colors because I couldn't remember what was going on, what I had done, what I hadn't done. I started coloring everything wrong so I did go over some of the areas and I'll talk about that as I get there. And I think now I'm just gathering up all of my colors so that I have the right shades there. There we go. There's a, there they are. And I decided to go with the teas instead of the cools or the toner grays instead of the cool grays because I wanted the robe. I know the robes are, um, or excuse me, the W's instead of the neutral grays. I just maybe I just should go back to bed. Is it bedtime yet? I don't know. Um, for their clothes, I wanted them to be gray because in the movie, you know, they are they are the gray. They're a little more on the darker side of gray, but I didn't want to take away from the outline because sometimes then it looks quite blurred. Um, so I did a darker color for the bottoms, which you'll see here in a minute because this is one of the places where I in, I realized I had used the wrong um, toner color. It should have been the T5 and not the T1 and T3. It should have been T3 and T5 for the pants. Um, so I do go in and, and add just a little of that, a little extra shading. But for the coats, I wanted them to be almost black, but I didn't want it to... Um, see, here I go fixing it. Just a little bit of that dark color. Um, and then I'll blend it down. I didn't want uh, the outlines of the coats to get lost. So I went with the warm grays um, just to give them the same kind of color as the coats from the movies. But um, I still wanted you to see that it was a coat and not a blob. Not to mention I end up using my cut and scan here in a minute and um, <laughs> it was having a really hard time picking up the really dark color so I was glad that I didn't go super black. Um, so now we're just going to go ahead and put in the shading where I think it should go and at this point I'm kind of guessing because I'm realizing that I have been out of coloring practice for too long. You see there I do one line on Hermione's jacket kind of at a diagonal but the other side is straight because I thought about it halfway through like oh if I do it on a diagonal then it'll look like it's kind of cutting in a little but you know to each his own I guess learn from your mistakes that sort of thing I've got Harry's lines are all over the place I'm just like oh, I don't know what I'm doing so I go in with my darker color here and then I'll go in with the lighter shade and blend it all out now, Harry's hands are, um, my ink was very juicy, so when I stamped him, it filled in the space, but normally his hands look just like Hermione's there. Um, this just happened to be the better of the ones that I had stamped out, and I really was trying to get this deck hard done as soon as I could so I could send it to my dad, which, as of making this video, which is the 1st of May, um, I know when it will be posted, it'll be way past. But as I'm making this, my card is still sitting on my desk because, like I said, I got sick in the middle of this project and or this card, and um, kids still need to make theirs or theirs or want to make theirs, and kind of forgot to mail it. So my dad will get this card. It just won't be on his birthday, obviously. So now that we've finished coloring them in, I did leave um, his little shirt tails there white because I thought it gave a nice little color. I didn't even put any shading in and I thought they looked just nice. So for the broom and the hats I'm using um, E37, E57, E59 and a little Y17 on the broom handle or towards the bristles. I go in, so for the hat I need, I really wanted to give it a little more character. So I go in with just one layer of my um, E57 and just do one layer of that. 
and then I go in with the E59 and add just a little detail so it looks like there's a whole bunch of little folds and 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 uh, creases and stuff like that just so that it looked a little more worn and weathered and of course it does sort of look like a zebra I, but I really like the way it you know ended up turning out and stuff like that so once all the lines are in and I'm happy with the way things look I do go over again to smooth it all out um, with E57 I do um, I do E59 for the little band there I thought it just needed a little bit but I do go over that I believe pretty sure with oh maybe I don't. um I possible who knows let's let's watch let's wait and see right no I don't um but I think the lines give it just a little bit more character but they're nice and soft so it's not like in your face zebra print and I do the same thing for the broom I color it all I fill in the little mouth there with um Y09 W9 W9 Sorry guys. Um, the broom itself is all one color, um, but I do create little brush lines in the bristle end, um, just again to give it a little more texture and dimension and stuff like that. So, and that's with the E59. And I just drag it out a whole bunch and then I go over it again to soften the lines because I want it to look like the bristles but not heavily. And I thought I was I would add some some um texture to the broom handle and thought nope because then I'm gonna mess that up, so nope. And I it does blend out quite a bit of the um bristle look there, but yeah. So those are all my images colored. Then I'm going to take them over to my brother cut and scan and cut them out with just a tiny little white border. Here are all the Copic markers I used and there will be a picture at the end of all the supplies. So I took all of them out, gave them a little border. I think they look so cute with that little tiny border all the way around them. And apparently I am missing where I cut I must have cut that out. Oh crap. Oh sorry. Um, I used the magic wand from one of the sets to um, do the background of my card base there and I just used Lawn Fawn's um, I believe it was Narwhal. Let's see if I move my hand. Ah, Manatee. Manatee said. It gave it a nice subtle and I did a lot of um, generation stamping and then I realized I forgot to put his little um, little lightning bolt so I added that but then I in the manatee because I wanted it to be there but I didn't want it to be harsh and black I wanted it to look you know like a scar um, but I didn't like how light that was so I do go over it a second time just to make it a little bit darker so now he actually looks like Harry I'm gonna move my ink out of the way and bring back my card base and I'm going to play around with the layout so as you can see there's all the magic wands oh I guess I purposely left it out I thought I had I thought I had recorded that so I apologize for that I should have recorded that so now I'm just kind of playing around I thought I'd have him look like he was riding the broom but I didn't like the way that looked it just didn't look right and I didn't care for her wearing the hat so much so playing around with the layout here of all my images and decide that Harry will hold his broom and Hermione will hold the hat and they'll kind of get tucked behind them a little bit um, so it looks like they're they're holding them at their side although it does look like Harry is now standing on his broom <laughs> And at this point, I am over. I'm I'm forcing myself to get over my my issue, my sickness, and creating this card. So at this point, it was just like, let's just let's play and and see how it looks. And I couldn't quite get myself to really love everything until the card was all put together. 
I'm using a sentiment from one of the stamp sets. It just says have a magical birthday. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the broom to Harry and then the hat to Hermione so that it does not shift. Of course, I'm trying to get all of my glue out of my glue bottle here. It doesn't seem to want to. It's a pretty full bottle. It just doesn't want to come out. A little fuzz on my finger there and I didn't want it to get caught. Yay, glue! So I apologize, I'm off camera. I told you, it's been a while. I need to get back in the swing of things. So I'm just gluing that on and I'm holding it in place a little bit and then I push it down so that it lays flat there till it dries and I'm ready to glue it on. This time I was smarter and I put glue on her hand instead of on the hat. That way um, I could put it wherever I needed. And I did move the hat up a little higher so it didn't look like it was hanging down so much. Now I'm just going to kind of play with them and see how I want them to go. And now that I'm happy with the layout, ideally I should have stamped my sentiment first, but thankfully I wasn't, I didn't uh, get it on the images. And I really do love the way that background looks, especially with the magical birthday sentiment. So fun. So I glue everything down and grab my little lawn fun stamp block here and stamp out my green using, I do believe, jet black ink from um, Lawn Fawn. Hopefully, maybe, possibly. Yep, yay! <laughs> That's usually my go-to because it works great with Copic markers. I've heard that it works well with watercolors too, I just haven't tried it yet. So the sentiment is from the Grand Wizard, as I showed there. Um, and I just stamped it off onto a scratch piece of paper so that I could ensure that it get good coverage and that it removed whatever residue might have been on there. My card's a little crooked, but my sentiment goes on relatively straight with the card. And I close up my ink before I stick my arm in it. And there is my the front of my card. Now for the inside of the card, I did ha know exactly what sentiment I wanted to use, but I had a hard time placing it. Um, my card size is a top folding size card, and I do believe it's a... Um, just one second while you watch me play around with my images. Sorry about that. I actually had to measure it. It's a five and a half by four inch, excuse me, a five by four card. So it's five inches tall by four inches wide. Top folding, obviously. I wanted a small, they're smaller images, so I knew that a smaller card would work. And now I'm just kind of playing around with the layout like I was showing you. I, I am so sorry, guys. I probably apologized a lot in this film. I need to get back into the swing of things. So I'm pretty much happy with where my sentiment is going to go and where the images are going to go. I do play around a little bit more once I stamp out my sentiment. But for the most part, this is this is my layout. I thought about putting Fox on the back of the card, but I really wanted him to be out, you know, kind of center stage there. So I'm just going to stamp out my sentiment it's uh, I believe I'm using 110 pound cardstock uh, just some cardstock that I got from uh, Joann's so see I'm still kind of hemming and hawing at my 
at where my images are and I thought I would add some of the little fire and thought mm, maybe not and just again could not decide so I finally decide with Dumbledore kind of middle between the end of the sentiment and the bottom of the card and Fox will be up there in the top corner but again I will be playing around with him and then I didn't realize until after the card was all done that he went down crooked so see I thought about putting him on the back but I thought no I really want him to be kind of center stage so I couldn't again could not decide <laughs> where I wanted him to go which is which is odd because usually once I have placement down I know so put him in the top corner at kind of an angle and glued him in place and then I have a little bit of space there to write my dad a message and that's it for my card guys so there's the inside of my card thank you all so much for bearing with me I hope you enjoyed this card and got a little inspiration and uh, we'll see you next time happy crafting Bye now. Okay, so I guess I was wrong. I guess the footage did go in. It just got put in in the wrong order. Sorry about that. So here I am going to show you how I stamped out the um, background on the front of my card. Holy cow. It must. I must have clicked it and added it in there without realizing it. I, you know, just... <laughs> I am so sorry, guys. And I didn't even use manatee. I used narwhal. Okay. No, I didn't. See, it's just... Oh, it's a long process. I really, really should learn how to edit better. So here, I'm, I'm just... I'm going to go through all of my lawn phonics, trying to find the right color that I want, stamping it off here to see if I like generation. I wanted it to be kind of a dark... Um... Uh, stamp first generation. Yeah, see there. I'm telling you to hold on a second. Like I was doing this all live. Um, I wanted to have a dark first stamp, but fade off more for the second and third generations. And so manatee worked out great. So I just kind of randomly go in here and um, stamp everything out. I put post-it notes at the top just to protect the backside. And then I do um, cover my mat a little bit with the scrap piece of paper there. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason, but I think at the end it turned out I just wanted to fill in most of the gaps. So just a little wand with magic. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here as I hang my head in shame because I'm usually a little better than this. So I apologize. I apologize. So enjoy the rest of my card making video even though it should have already been over and uh, we'll see you in the next video hopefully we'll be so much better than this live videos what are you gonna do right well I guess it's not even really a live video but you know what I mean alright thank you guys so much for joining me have a wonderful day I'll see you next time happy crafting <laughs>